as soon as you say, I'm doing Midsummer Night's Dream, people say, oh, how are you doing it? What are you doing to make it different and unique? So with the set, uh, we knew we didn't want it to be too literal. Uh, we didn't want hanging trees and, and obvious things to say, oh, this is a forest. Shakespeare didn't have any of that. He had a big open platform, and the language takes care of all that. We wanted to do things that would spark the imagination of the audience, but not do the whole job for them. We also wanted the design of work to be universal, that this isn't just about 2012 in Lewiston, it's about ideas that have existed throughout history. So the design, the music, the, uh, the costumes are reflecting moments all through history and they all get kind of mashed together. Actors in Shakespeare need to have two extremes, at least. Uh, they need to have the extreme of honesty, immediacy, connection with each other, uh, make an, uh, an audience believe it's happening right now in front of you. Everybody has done a version of magic. So we tried to make magic connect with light in this play. So a lot of the interesting design choices and prop choices came out with uh, fairies having light on them in some way, uh, in their hats, uh, on, their, on their wrists. Uh, um, there are lighting effects when something happens that, that turns somebody into love. So the magic in this play is about enlightening, about seeing something better. This is your chance to find out that Shakespeare ain't necessarily what you read in high school. This is not, you don't come to Midsummer Night's Dream because it's good for you. You're going to find uh, the best romantic comedy you've experienced you've had, but it's richer, it's freer, and it's also funnier.